Antonio starts right now. And right now at 4.30, the latest into former President Donald Trump and his alleged role in hush money payments, what Manhattan's grand jury could deliver soon. And let's look out there with live cam muggy and 68 degrees. I would say it's significantly warmer than yesterday morning. And more mist and drizzle. Sound familiar? It should. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, March 22nd. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, a little icky out there, but I know things will improve eventually. I saw sun for like a minute yesterday, yeah. Mike yeah. Osterhage, and I'm hoping for two minutes today. Well, two, three minutes, yes. Okay. And it was interesting because yesterday I kept looking, I go, is that, is that interesting? And you look over here and it's dark clouds. And it's yeah. like, yeah. But it was more towards evening when the sun, the clouds yes. finally broke and then it clouded right back up. Yes, and we will, like I said, see a little more sunshine later on today. And yes, we have some mist and drizzle. We're not seeing the, the showers pick, picked up on radar right now, so I don't know. If that's a good thing or not, but yeah, it's still misty, drizzly. Uh, you can see kind of that fuzz off there in the distance. The road appears to be a little bit damp over there at 410 by the airport. Seven miles visibility, you valley, so nothing real thick as of right now. Seven in Kerrville, six out there at the airport, and temperatures, yeah, are much, much warmer. Just to put it in perspective, warmer than yesterday. Our high temperature normal is 75 degrees, so we are a lot closer to that than the normal low, which is right around low to mid 50s. And and yeah, the humidity just keeps going up and up and up and we get this humidity pumping on in here and that's what gives us all of these little, little bits of mist and drizzle and some of that fog. Oak is on the moderate side. Mold is low in yesterday's count and throughout the rest of the morning temperatures are going to be basically steady. We've been kind of fluctuating uh, 68, 69 degrees this morning and we'll have mist, drizzle, a couple of patches of fog here and there. And then yes, yeah, some sunshine later on today. Strike up the band for that and that's going to help to get us up into the low 80s bit of a breeze out there, but it's out of the southeast, so it just continues to pull in all that humidity. Now, it's going to be about the same situation tomorrow. Mr. is in the morning. We make it up into the mid 80s, then that's setting the stage for that front to move through late tomorrow night, Friday with some showers and thunderstorms. We'll talk about that and then see what's in behind that for the weekend. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. If you heard helicopters flying near downtown last night, well, we know why. Federal and local law enforcement teamed up for joint training at the Alamo Dome. Our cameras were able to see helicopters navigate their way into the corners of the Alamo Dome, drop off emergency personnel, and take off. The scenario is fake, but Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the need for this rehearsal is real. The training included first responders from the FBI, along with San Antonio police and fire. People nearby could see soldiers and hear those helicopters. We live in an era where uh, attacks have happened and we have to be prepared for them to happen in the future. And last night, the most noticeable thing was the helicopters, since most of the action appeared to be inside. The Alamo Dome was also used in military training last summer. Murder charges have been dropped against 24-year-old Reno Corrales of San Antonio. He was charged with the 2017 murder of a man named Mark Rios. Rios was found at his Southside home with a gunshot wound. He later died at the hospital. San Antonio police connected Corrales to the murder, and he was set to go on trial yesterday. Court records show the case was dismissed due to a witness who failed to show up and testify. All eyes are on a Manhattan in New York City as a grand jury could deliver charges against former President Donald Trump. The charges come from his role in an alleged hush money payments to an adult film star. ABC's Jacqueline Lee has the details. It's possible that in just a few hours, a grand jury will find that former President Donald Trump broke the law in a case involving alleged hush money payments made to adult film star Stormy Daniels just days before the 2016 election. No one is above the law. Demonstrators on both sides gathering in New York City as the former president calls on his supporters to protest. I'm just not going to get into hypotheticals or, or uh, any potential scenarios, but we are always prepared. This comes amid a new development involving another federal investigation of the former president. Sources tell ABC News a federal judge determined that the special counsel investigating Trump's handling of classified documents presented compelling preliminary evidence that Trump may have broken the law. The special counsel argued that the former president's attorneys should be compelled to testify because Trump knowingly misled them to file a sworn statement that he knew was false. That sworn statement came in June when Trump's lawyer certified that a diligent search of his Mar-a-Lago estate determined he had turned over all the classified documents in his possession. 
Two months later, when FBI agents raided the premises, prosecutors say they found more than 100 additional classified documents, including some in Trump's office desk. In a separate case in Georgia, Trump's attorneys filed a motion for that state court to throw out an investigation related to his alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 election. The U.S. Secret Service and NYPD are coordinating security plans in case Trump is indicted and arraigned in open court. Now, officials are watching for online threats, but at the moment, nothing serious at this point in time. Jacqueline Lee, ABC News, New York. Flood waters are forcing some residents in Arizona to leave their homes. Evacuation orders are in place in the parts of northern Arizona as flash floods move through the region. People living in the areas of lakes and creeks were told to move to higher ground. This as parts of the county saw one to two inches of rain yesterday. Arizona Department of Transportation advised postponing non-essential travel in the northern part of that state. Time now, 435 and 60 degrees for now. Still ahead, the latest recalls from stores like Trader Joe's and Walmart. What's being recalled and why? And fiesta season just around the corner now. What changes are coming for a big fiesta event next? Checking Transguide right now. Yesterday was a mess out there. The roads look uh, quite a bit better, but again, we still have some mist drizzle and perhaps some fog out there. So give yourself a few extra minutes and make sure you pay ahead to the road ahead of you. We'll be right back. Oh, we actually, we've got live cam here. Yes, we do. And you know, looks a little murky out there. Just kind of humid, 68 degrees, but we are expecting things to change, at least for the weekend. We'll be right back. Lily here with the True Fiesta Royalty. I'm here with Happy Happy Hazel, the Queen, and Scout, the King in Waiting. If you want to keep up with our full Fiesta coverage all Fiesta season, head over to KSAT.com slash Fiesta. Thank you, Lily. That was our KSAT intern, Lily Buckert, who got a sneak peek into the Fiesta San Antonio Commission's plans for this year's Fiesta. There are some changes to this year's event, including the big one a new location for Fiesta Fiesta. So that event will now be held at Travis Park. This move is due to construction on Alamo Street and at Hemisphere Park. There will also be two new official events, one being held by Central Catholic High School, that's close to us, and the other by the Girl Scouts. All the organizations at Media Day were there showing off their events to raise money for local nonprofits. All the organizations are really gearing up for a full fiesta this year. We're very excited for the whole gamut of all the fiesta events to be back to normal. Fiesta begins April 20th and that will run until the 30th. So for more information, you can head on over to FiestaSanAntonio.org. And we are so excited to host another Battle of Flowers parade. Yes, it'll be fun. And I'm wondering what the weather's going to be. Last year was so funny. It started off cold Chilly. And, it, and it turned beautiful. We had jackets on early. That's for sure. You yeah. never know around here in the springtime. Mm -hmm. 440, 68 degrees. And still ahead, the latest in Hollywood and what's being said about the newest episode of Ted Lasso. And next, latest recalls from some stores you might have shopped at recently, including a new recall from a different type of infant formula. In this morning's GMA First Look, Gwyneth Paltrow in court. She knew what she was doing was dangerous. She knew it was reckless. The Oscar-winning actress being sued accused of violently crashing into a man during a Utah family ski trip in 2016. 76-year-old Terry Sanderson says he has permanent brain damage and suffered four broken ribs after Paltrow slammed into him at the Deer Valley Resort. He is now seeking $300,000 in damages. The only witness of the crash, one of Sanderson's skiing acquaintances, taking the stand. I looked over and then about, you know, maybe one or two seconds um, and then I hear the scream and then and then and then I see this 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 skier just slam into the back of Terry. We'll have much more on the Oscar winner's trial coming up at 7 a.m. Plus legal expert Dan Abrams weighs in live with your GMA First Look. I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. An important warning for new parents. Another type of infant formula is being recalled. This time it's from the Gerber brand. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Morris explains that and why some foods sold at Walmart and Trader Joe's are also being recalled. 
Parent alert, some Gerber powdered infant formula is recalled because it might be contaminated with potentially dangerous bacteria. This is Gerber Good Start Sooth Pro, made between January 2nd and 18th. The FDA says Cronobacter Sakazaki may have been present at the plant. No illnesses have been reported, but customers should throw it out or ask the company for a refund. If you bought these snacks at Walmart, check the box. Cleo Snacks is recalling strawberry, granola, and Greek yogurt parfait bars because of possible listeria contamination. The expiration date is April 30th. Take them back or toss them out. Have fruit in the freezer? The company that makes Trader Joe's organic tropical fruit blend made with strawberries is recalling it. The strawberries may be linked to an outbreak of hepatitis A illnesses. The best buy dates are all in April, May, and June of next year. Again, don't eat it. Either take it back to Trader Joe's or just throw it out. We have the specific product codes on the infant formula, the fruit, and the snacks on our website. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Checking Transkai, we do have an incident right now that is active, and this is showing a Highway 90 and Loop 1604 over there near SeaWorld right now. We've got a fire truck out there and a couple other vehicles. Uh, Stephen has an eye on this. He is in the building, and we'll have more coming up throughout the newscast. Well, it is early, so hopefully they'll get that cleared up soon, and it looks like a couple of vehicles are making their way Agreed. through Agreed. Right Agreed. Hope so. Yeah. All right. It was, I, boy, that mist. You know, it's, I don't know what's, it, what's worse, just steady rain or just that little mist? It, it's like somebody kind of poking you the whole time. It was all morning long <laughs> yesterday. Yes. So I guess that's the best way to describe it. Yeah, you know, it's that's just accurate. Yeah. So I won't poke you anymore. So sorry about that. <laughs> you're good. You're good. Uh, anyway, and we've got a little bit of mist out there. And then, yes, we did see, as Mark said, about a minute of sunshine in the afternoon. There's the sunset in Sisterdale. Thank you very much for that uh, picture, Peggy. Beautiful out there. Send in those KSAC Connect pictures. All right, we're looking obviously at the airport right now, and you can just see all the fuzz off there in the background. A lot of humidity. We're not seeing as thick a fog right now as what we saw at this time yesterday morning. There are hints of it here and there. Seven mile visibility, Uvalde 5, Bernie stage, and just little bits here and there. But as is usually the case, as the morning rolls on, it will start to thicken up. A lot of it over there around Eagle Pass, though, at just three quarters of a mile visibility and not much once again down here along the, the coastal plain. Temperatures mid 60s on average, and then you got the dew points, which are just neck and neck. And these numbers have been continuing to go up. As a matter of fact, yes, yesterday, Today, they were up about 20 degrees on average compared to the previous day, and now we've gone up again, even compared to yesterday, another 10, 12, 13 degrees. So it's just that humidity that keeps getting pumped on in here, all the moisture from the Gulf. That will continue to be the case today as well as tomorrow. Temperatures are going to be steady where they are right now, that 10% chance for a little bit of mist and drizzle out there this morning, a couple of patches of fog, and then we will make it up into the low to mid 70s at noon. And yes, Maybe two, three minutes of sunshine, a little bit more than yesterday. And also that's going to get us up into the low 80s for a high temperature and a bit of a breeze, but still out of the south to southeast. So all it's going to do is continue to pump in all the humidity. So here's the computer model. This one's a little more generous with skies seeing more sunshine. We're not going to completely clear on out like that, but then the clouds come back in here tomorrow morning. We'll do it all over again tomorrow morning with the mist and drizzle, some sunshine in the afternoon. Then that is going to be setting the stage with all that warm, moist air for potential showers and thunderstorms. And by Friday morning early, and this will stand Timing has continued to slow down with the passage of this front earlier in the week and even Late last week in the weekend, it had looked like that it was going to be coming through more in the late evening hours tomorrow night. Now it's been slowing down and it won't be until the overnight hours and actually early Friday morning. But we will have showers and thunderstorms with that. Storm Prediction Center still has isolated to scattered potential severe storms, high winds and hail. And this would be late tomorrow night, more likely early on Friday morning passing across the area. Now, as the front moves on through, there you can see the very high humidity and boy, it drops like a rock. Again, this is not going to be like, I know the timing's the same as last week, but it's not going to be the same kind of front because, you know, we had that very, very cold, cold weekend. That won't be the situation. It will dry out considerably with those dew points dropping down, but we'll still have some uh, mild temperatures. So we're setting up at least 
Friday afternoon, Saturday and first part of Sunday. Just fantastic weather, but things may get rough around here early on Friday. 75 degrees at noon, cloudy skies and still some mist hanging around here this morning. Then we will see a little bit more in the way of sunshine compared to yesterday. 82 high temperature and still the humidity gets pumped on in here. Then tomorrow, same start up to 85, similar in the afternoon. Front comes through late Almost not even really late tomorrow. It's going to be early on Friday, um, right around this time on Friday or even slightly after that. And that's going to shift the wind around some showers and thunderstorms and we'll get up to 82 still on Friday, but much lower humidity. So it's going to be really, really nice in the afternoon and then going into Saturday. Fantastic. More humidity on Sunday clouds increase and then more substantial front, which will actually cool us down a bit more for the first of next week. Looks nice overall. Yeah, so we'll keep an eye on things for basically Friday morning around here. The roller coaster continues, but not as steep a drops now. Yeah. No, not not this time around compared to <laughs> last week. What we had. OK, yeah. no Thank snow. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah. no. 450, 68 degrees. And coming up, we're going to see the latest on what's happening in Hollywood. Plus what's being said about a new episode of Ted Lasso. Here are all your lottery numbers. Pick three, four, five, two, Fireball six. Your daily four number six, nine, two, eight, Fireball nine. Cash five, four, ten, twenty eight, thirty three, thirty five. And your Mega Millions one, twenty one, twenty five, twenty seven, forty, Mega Ball eleven, Mega Flyer two. Good luck. Regarding my panic attacks, I've had more psychotic episodes than Twin Peaks. A new episode of Ted Lasso out today, and we've been told the season might be the last, at least in its current form. That opens the door for a spinoff, and a logical continuation would focus on Nick Mohammed's character, Nate. Mohammed tells me he's open to the idea, but also maybe not. You know, the show has been so great, and we're, we're so grateful to be a part of it that um, anything that might slightly damage that experience of it by suddenly, you know, there being a spin-off and actually not being as good as the original, I think would be a shame. Season three of Ted Lasso airing now on Apple TV+. Plus. The flowers keep coming from Miley Cyrus. Her song Flowers is back at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart, knocking out the weekend in Ariana Grande's Die For You remix, which ruled the chart for the past two weeks. Flowers has now been number one for seven non-consecutive weeks. Roll it. A lot of history buffs out there. The sketch series History of the World Part 2 is Hulu's most watched scripted show of the year in its first week of launch. And happy birthday, Captain Kirk. Star Trek star William Shatner is 92 today, while actor and comedian Keegan-Michael Key is 52. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Kirk and Keegan celebrating birthdays. Yeah. 455, 68 degrees. And coming up, why SAISD librarians were rallying last night outside of a district school board meeting. What a statement released by the district revealed about their jobs. Plus, the families of the victims from the Robb Elementary School shooting are now feeling a renewed sense of pain. Why some families are saying one man is the cause. And let's look at the roads. A trans guy looking over at that accident again at Highway 90 at Loop 1604. Our Stephen Cabasos has his eye on it, and we'll be checking with him very soon. Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The families of some of the victims from the Robb Elementary School shooting are now feeling a renewed sense of pain and anger. Why they say this man cost it all. And right now at 5, why San Antonio Independent School District's librarians are rallying after what a statement released by the district revealed. Mike has one, uh, not one, but two cold fronts in the extended forecast. But this morning, more fog and mizzle, mizzle. Mist and drizzle, put them together. <laughs> right? You're welcome, Webster's. <laughs> New definition this morning. 459, good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is March 22nd. Thanks for joining us. I think that's appropriate for this morning. Right, and I think I've slipped up and said that in past years, but I just forgot all about it. That's fine. Kind of sums things up nicely. Yeah. Mizzle? Yeah, yeah, I like Log it. and mizzle. Yeah. You just... Then you're also welcome. Being very, very efficient with your, your word usage. <laughs> Spread the word with your fellow meteorologists. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. And closed captioning right now is going... 
but oh. they just get to the point. So anyway, uh, we have temperatures that are way, way above normal. The normal low is 53 degrees right now. We're at 68 and that bottom number is at 67. So when those two are running neck and neck, then you get relative humidity well up there in the upper 90s. And yes, there is a little bit of Mizzle being reported out there at the airport right now. We're going to make it up to 82. We were in the uh, low 70s yesterday, so we will get warmer. We will see a little bit more sunshine than what we saw. There were just a couple of peaks out there as expected yesterday, just a bit more today. The aquifer dropped down three tenths of a foot and the allergens, not many. You know, we've had that kind of grocery list of allergens in recent weeks, but the oak was on the moderate side. Mold is low. We still have some fog to deal with this morning. It's not as thick as what it was at this time yesterday but don't forget it will get thicker in places as the morning rolls on five miles visibility Bernie stage seven Port SA View Valley 10 now at the airport so it's again not bad but with that mist out there the roads are definitely on the damp side and everybody is way way above normal right now mid and upper 60s and will gain about Oh gosh, 10, 15 degrees maybe throughout the day and dew points. Everybody is well above that threshold line of 60 and that's when you start to feel the humidity. So you walk outside and you go, yep, it is a humid day. So morning drizzle, mizzle, however you want to call it, then some more sunshine later on today. That gets us into the low 80s. Then tomorrow, same start and then a bit more sunshine, slightly warmer, mid 80s. That is setting the stage with the warm, humid air for storms to move in late and then early Friday morning with the passage of the next front. Now, this is not a big cold front like last week's, even though the timing is the same, but it will get rid of the humidity. So it's going to be really, really comfortable Friday afternoon, Friday night going into Saturday. Yep, Saturday's fantastic day pleasant morning warm in the afternoon will be slightly above normal and then the clouds will increase on sunday a bit more humidity around here another front's going to move through then early on monday this one has some cooler air i won't say cold but just cooler temperatures going into next week details in just a couple of minutes traffic authority good morning mr vasos got some problems out there right uh, mike unfortunately we're starting wednesday with some bumps in the road here along us 90 at loop 1604 let's get a wider look at trans guide show you exactly what's taking place out there you see plenty of first responders now we've been showing you the shot for the last few minutes but uh looks like progress is being made slow progress but sometimes these crashes do take time this is actually at the intersection there us 90 at loop 1604 north uh, you can see a Traffic is still moving down just to one lane, but you have to watch out for the first responders. It does look like a, a crash that involved two vehicles at this point. We do have a tow truck out on the scene, so it looks like we may be catching the tail end of this. But if you are traveling traveling in the area in far west uh, Bear County near SeaWorld, just use plenty of caution this morning. No buildup is being reported in either the east or westbound lanes of 90, but we see a little bit of a buildup there in the southbound lanes uh, just behind that graphic along Loop 1604. So again, uh, we have first responders that are working to clear things up. Hopefully everyone is doing okay out there. Giving you a wide look at the metropolitan area. We're starting a basically the wider, wider viewing area doesn't look uh, too bad out there. Plenty of green on the screen, uh, but obviously a lot of construction as well. So be on the lookout for some of those tech stock crews. We're going to watch this area closely throughout the morning, but you can see again, first responders are working to clear the situation up. Hopefully we'll come back with a better update here, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Now we have late breaking news on the east side of town. A shooting that sent a man to the hospital. Katrina Weber is live in the 400, or rather 500 block of Aurelia Street. That's not far from I-10 and Martin Luther King Drive. Have police caught the shooter, Katrina? Well, they do have a woman in custody, a suspect in this case, who they caught not far from here. They believe that the victim and the suspect do know each other. In fact, they're calling this a domestic situation. The shooting happened at a home right here in the 500 block of Aurelia. Uh, right before 4.30 this morning, uh, police got the call here. They say they did find a man in his late 50s with a gunshot wound to his lower body in the groin area. Uh, and they did arrest, uh, again, a woman not far from here. They say that, yeah, this was some sort of a domestic situation that ended with the shooting. That woman in custody, the man, has been taken to a hospital, and they say his injury was non-life-threatening. Uh, we do have all kinds of investigators here. Uh, they've been talking to neighbors and also going around collecting evidence uh, to try to figure out exactly what happened and what led to this sort of violence. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. SCISD librarians made their voices heard yesterday outside of the district school board meeting. Now, many are rallying after finding out that most of the jobs expected to be cut 
are mostly going to be filled in the school libraries. Now, this was the scene around 530 yesterday evening outside of the district school board meeting. Now, in a statement from SAISD, they tell us the library services will be provided by staff rather than certified librarians in some cases. I am here to support all the librarians because our job is in danger. By cutting your librarians from our libraries and shutting those positions down, we are doing a huge disservice to our students in our community. Now, the district statement did go on to say it will work with the people affected by those cuts to find them other positions within the districts. And the effort to open the Uvalde School District's next elementary school is moving forward. That's right. Community members got together last night and shared their thoughts on the school's location and design. The Uvalde CISD Moving Forward Foundation is raising money for the project. Its leadership says the victims' families are also very involved in the process. There are continued conversations happening about the ways that we can best honor the lives lost um, in a way that celebrates their lives. The two-story building would serve grades two through four in Uvalde. The design is scheduled to go to the Uvalde School Board for approval sometime next month. What well, has been more than nine months now since the shooting at Robb Elementary? Now, as the families of the victims are trying to get through each day, they are feeling a renewed sense of pain and anger because of Nathan Cuomo. They say uh, he's the man who fooled them and capitalized on their tragedy. Here's Case Athlete Waldman with what the families of the victims are saying. In the beginning, I thought he had good intentions. I really did. But as things started to come out about him afterwards and everything that has surfaced since then, I truly do believe now that he, he set out to manipulate us all. Looking at Nathan Cuomo's behavior and failed promises since the tragedy that took her step-granddaughter, Amory Jo, it's hard for Berlinda Ariola to see anything but ill intentions. You're just as evil as the man that, that started this whole mess to begin with, just in a whole different, different way. Jesse Rizzo, Jackie Casares' uncle, feels the same way. He doesn't think of what the, the long-term effect of something like this. So yeah, there's a lot of anger. They both remember hearing Cuomo's plans to honor their loved ones and other victims with a recreation center. It would have meant, one, that our, our family members, our children, our teachers, their, their death wouldn't go in vain, that something good came out of it. Cuomo cut off all contact with them after allegedly selling thousands of dollars worth of tickets to a festival and soccer tournament that never happened. That money didn't belong to him. He literally, again, used these 21 souls that were horrifically murdered and to turn around and steal. Cuomo didn't stop there. He claimed he would revitalize the city of Uvalde's soccer program. Mayor Don McLaughlin says hundreds of kids enrolled for this season and next. It's my understanding he was supposed to send a check for $8,000 to the city you know, for that program because the city runs the soccer program. The check never came. While the city isn't out that money, it would have helped the kids with jerseys and other costs. Well, as far as I'm concerned, uh, that chapter is closed. Nathan in the city of Uvalde, that chapter is closed. It's not going to be reopened. Rizzo and Ariola want to close that chapter too, but not until they share the truth about Cuomo. And we're pushing this out over the social media wherever we have to till it gets word out everywhere that needs to get out so that this does not happen to another family again. I have called, texted, emailed, and sent messages over social media to Cuomo, but he has not responded. To be clear, he has not been charged with any crime and is currently not under any kind of investigation. Plans to build a recreation center are still in the works. Mayor McLaughlin says there are 25 acres set aside by the Valdi Memorial Hospital to build on. There are sponsors who have come forward wanting to help fund it. He says all of that will be handled through the Uvalde Forever Foundation out of Kerrville. Back to you. Thank you very much, Lee Waldman. 508, 68 degrees. Today is World Water Day, and a new report released by the UN warns a potential global water crisis. What that report reveals and what's being held today to discuss potential next steps. Outside with live cam this morning, Mike says we should see a little more sun today. We'll talk to him coming up a little later in the newscast.
And welcome back. It's 512. Today is World Water Day, and it is also the first day of the UN 2023 Water Conference. A meeting like this hasn't been held since 1977. It comes as the UN releases a report warning the planet is off track in reaching clean water and sanitation for all. According to the report, 2 billion people worldwide do not have access to clean drinking water. The UN 2023 Water Conference's plan today is to set goals and develop plans to improve these conditions. 512, 68 degrees. Still ahead, a first look at Pretty Baby, Brooke Shields, a documentary that shows her career from the early stages and up. Next, the latest changes with social media app TikTok, what the app now has, has to make it safer. Dad. We got this. We got this. Let me check out the town, okay? We got this. 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 Life is for living. We got this. Let's partner for all of it. Edward Jones. When a cold comes on strong, knock it out with Big Stay Quill Severe. Just one dose starts to relieve nine of your worst cold and flu symptoms to help take you from nine to none. Power through with Big Stay Quill Severe, the daytime coughing, aching, fever, sore throat, nine to none medicine. Your shipping manager left to find themselves, leaving you lost. You need to hire. I need Indeed. Indeed, you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. Visit Indeed.com/slash hire. In today's Tech Bytes, changes at TikTok amid the threat of a U.S. ban. The Chinese-owned app is clarifying its community guidelines and adding new policies on AI and climate misinformation. TikTok CEO is expected to promise firewall protection for Americans' user data when he appears before Congress tomorrow. And more ads are coming to Instagram. Parent company Meta is beginning to test ads in search results. The goal is to reach people searching for businesses, products, and content. Instagram Instagram will also launch reminder ads as a way to help companies push upcoming events. And Microsoft has launched Bing Image Creator. The company says the AI-powered tool will make the search engine more visual. The feature creates images based on text prompts. The Image Creator will be integrated with both the new Bing and Microsoft Edge. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 517. I know, a busy day for you again. Busy few days. We've had uh, plenty of issues out on the roadways, and today is no different, unfortunately, guys. Uh, it could be uh, maybe some of the mizzle that we've seen out there. but uh, Probably so. Probably, right. I mean, yesterday was uh, pretty murky outside, an ugly start to the day, and unfortunately, things have pretty much stayed the same. Yeah, yeah if you take Mike's forecast and you overlay it over Stephen's traffic <laughs> maps, you get what we've seen around here yeah. today. So, you know, hopefully everyone's doing okay out here, but this instant uh, incident here along US 90 at 1604, North uh, has not cleared out yet, guys. Uh, it looks like first responders are still in the clearing stages, so hopefully we'll have a better update before traffic really starts to get moving there. But you could see that they've been out there working to clear the scene for quite a while, causing some slow moving traffic in the area just down to one lane. And uh, earlier it did look like this may have involved two vehicles, but hopefully everyone is doing OK. Uh, looks like, again, a busy those first responders out there. Let's get you to the map because where it's been pointed US 90 loop 1604 North intersection. So it's not causing a huge delay with traffic. It's still early too. So this could give us some uh, time to avoid any big congestion, but use caution if you're traveling in this early, perhaps from Castroville or just through the area. Giving you a wide look at the metropolitan area, though more relief out here, plenty of green and lots of construction. And while we're on the subject of US 90, be on the lookout because tonight guardrail replacement will continue at least up until tomorrow morning. Now this does begin at 830 this evening should wrap at five in the morning. We'll see a single eastbound main lane closure from West Military Drive to old Highway 90. So watch for those tech stock crews out there as they work to improve the roadway and definitely watch out for crews here along the area of the intersection at 90 at 1604 North. Again, Mike, hopefully we'll have a better update coming up a little later on. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, you just got to watch it. Even though we've had, you know, some rain off and on the past couple of days, you just get that little bit of fine mist out there and tap the brakes and you can start slipping and sliding. So, all right, beautiful blooming buds on that tree. And then, yeah, we had those dark clouds, a little bit of sunshine yesterday. But as you can see, some of the uh, the buds right there, gorgeous picture. Nice view from that balcony. Thank you for the uh, KSAC Connect shot. All right, out there at the airport, 
visibility is okay. You can see all that kind of fuzzy look out there, all the humidity hanging around here, 10 miles visibility, but then you go up by 10 in toward Bernie and we got a little patch of fog up there, hints of it here and there, and that's going to be the situation throughout the day. A lot more out there along the Rio Grande, Del Rio, four miles, two miles visibility at Eagle Pass. So we'll just be on the lookout for this over the next couple of hours, as is usually the case in the morning. Mid upper 60s right now. Normal low temperature in town is 15 degrees below this, and then we've got again, and all that humidity and the southerly winds are only going to continue to pump in all the humidity. So we'll continue with a little bit of mist drizzle out there. There's nothing being picked up on radar right now, and that's uh, yesterday. We had those few little showers actually that were showing up on radar. Nothing like that, but still you may see some heavier mist or heavier drizzle out there. A couple of sprinkles mid 70s at noon. Then we're going to have some sunshine thrown on in later on today. A little bit more than what we had yesterday. 82 uh, for a high temperature. So we will be slightly on the warm side of things. Normal high being mid 70s right now. Humidity, as I mentioned, just continues to get pumped on in here throughout the rest of today, tomorrow. So we start off and all that humidity comes in and the atmosphere just kind of can't hold it anymore. And that's why we get some of that mist and drizzle around. And that'll be continue to be the situation through the afternoon. But notice how drier air out there to the northwest is going to start to to filter in. That's along the front, which is going to move through. Won't be until Friday morning is that front comes on through and so it'll have a lot of warm moist air to deal with and to kind of feed off of as it comes on in here. Here's the uh, computer model. Some sunshine in the afternoon. I think this one's a little bit generous on clearing those clouds out, but like I said, we'll do the same process tomorrow morning. Then as we go into Basically, Friday morning timing of this thing has continued to slow down somewhat. And there's some of those uh, showers and thunderstorms developing, so that will move on through. And it looks like the front's going to be coming through about morning commute time, maybe even a little bit after that on Friday. That's going to clear us on out, and then we're going to have some just gorgeous, gorgeous weather in behind that for Friday afternoon, and then going into Saturday, starting off Sunday. Some of those storms, though, as that front goes through here, comes on through here, could be on the strong, potentially severe side with high winds and some hail 75 at noon today cloudy skies and then a high temperature today up to 82 a little bit more sunshine than yesterday still plenty of humidity out there however then tomorrow same start same pretty much uh, throughout the rest of the day although a little bit warmer front comes through overnight and early Friday morning showers thunderstorms looks like a wet commute on Friday and then we clear on out Friday afternoon Saturday great warm but low humidity and then more humidity Sunday and then we'll cool down Monday Tuesday back down actually normal or a little bit below normal high temperatures. We need to gently break it to Stephen that Friday could be more of this mess. I know he's out of the room right now yes. but we'll break it to him gently. Yeah uh, maybe we'll tell him tomorrow. Okay yeah, all we'll right. Just wait till tomorrow. I know okay. he's listening right now too. 522 68 degrees. And coming up in a Hollywood minute a look at the latest documentaries to hit the screens plus before we head to break, here's KSET intern Lily Buckert with a look at one of the stories trending right now on KSET.com. Make sure to look up. You don't want to miss a planetary phenomenon that only comes by once every couple of years. This coming Tuesday, you'll be able to see five different planets in a so-called planetary parade. Those planets include Jupiter, Mercury, Venus, Uranus, and Mars. To get the best view, head out a little after sunset. For GMSA, I'm Lily Buckert. She was catapulted into the world of adult sexuality. I just always remember thinking, like, I hope she's okay. She was a young girl in an all-adult world. I'm amazed that I survived any of it. Here's your first look at pretty baby Brooke Shields. The documentary traces her career from child star to adult seeking her own voice in a society that often objectifies women and girls. Pretty baby Brooke Shields debuts April 3rd on Hulu. I'm impressed by the work around me. I'm the studio that just dominated the Academy Awards has snared another Oscar winner. Anne Hathaway is set to star in Mother Mary for A24, the studio behind Everything Everywhere All at Once and The Whale. It's described as an epic pop melodrama about a musician played by Hathaway and an iconic fashion designer played by Michaela Cole. Performing for one last time tonight, ladies and gentlemen, it's one direction. 
I thought for me, it was the band or nothing. It was hard for me to imagine myself on my own. Lewis Tomlinson, All of Those Voices, shows the singer-songwriter's journey from One Direction member to solo artist, featuring home movies and behind-the-scenes access to Tomlinson's life and career. The documentary debuts in a limited theatrical run today. Info and tickets at allofthosevoices.com. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time now, 527 and 68 degrees for now. City of San Antonio now responding to suspected squatters still ahead. What was found in this east side home after an inspection? Good morning. Let's look out there with live cam. All right, don't go back to bed just because you're hearing this. But yes, it's misting again. And yes, it's kind of humid, 68 degrees. But things are going to improve. Maybe we'll see a peak of sunshine. It's Wednesday, March 22nd. Welcome back and good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah. The one thing in that picture, at least we can see the skyline. Yeah, That's first good. time in a couple good. of yeah. mornings. Right? Unlike yesterday where yeah. it was just, you know, socked in, 41010 was nothing but uh, the pea soup out there. So we do have a little bit of uh, fog. And as Steph was talking about, there is some some mist, little, you know, drizzle out there. There's nothing being picked up on radar right now. And the only area reporting anything other than just cloudy skies is out there at the airport. A little bit of drizzle right now. Temperature stands at uh, 68 degrees, dew points at 67. So when those two numbers are running neck and neck and you get uh, no wind or a little bit of a breeze, you get some fog. And so we do have just hints of fog around the area. Burning stage at five miles visibility, seven Kerrville, Port S.A. Stinson has a little bit of fog, but then again, it usually gets thicker as the morning goes on. Mid upper 60s all around, so we're 15 degrees above normal as of right now and you walk outside and you know yeah it, it's pretty darn humid out there humidity is actually up compared to this time yesterday each and every day it's been continuing to go up and we'll just continue to get the humidity pumped on in here throughout the course of the afternoon as well as overnight oak is on the moderate side mold is low and as far as the rest of today mist around this morning and it'll be well stubborn like the past couple of days a lot of clouds still hanging in here tough throughout the morning hours mid 70s at noon we'll see a bit more sunshine even and then compared to yesterday, there were like, it's like, oh, that's the sun, I think, that just peaked out. But a little bit more than yesterday, 82. So we are going to be warmer and actually above normal. And that southeasterly wind is just going to continue to pull in all the humidity. Pretty much same situation tomorrow. Then we're talking about that front moving through late tomorrow night, early on Friday with some showers and storms, maybe some strong ones and pretty good looking weekend setting up. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. So still got some problems out there. Flashing lights. No, Mike. Better news report out here. Thankfully, that crash that we talked about earlier on the far west side has cleared. There it is. US 90 loop 1604. Now it's just steady traffic in that area, at least for now. Let's give you a quick look around town. There's 10 at the Y. Really, things are moving along just fine. Uh, of course, we've had a busy last few days here in the traffic lab, and our first responders have been busy as well, working to make sure everyone keeps it safe out there. But for right now, looks like the commute is in the green. You can see 35 at San Marcos. Things are moving along without any trouble, but still use some caution this morning. We know a lot of people will be out on the roadways getting their days started as the morning commute does get rolling. So that crash again has cleared out, so don't worry about it. We're going to get this off of our map in the next few minutes, but US 90 at loop 1604, that intersection there was blocked off for a little while, but uh, really wasn't causing a big delay because it was so early in the morning. Let's now give you a wide view of the metropolitan area. Again, it is the same story here. Plenty of green on the screen and lots of active construction, but none of that really is going to impact the commute. If you are traveling into San Antonio this early, still pretty pleasant actually on 37 northbound from Pleasanton, 28 minutes to the Alamo City along US 90 in those eastbound lanes. It should be about a 30 minute drive time heading in from Castroville and that arrival from Lytle should be within about 16 minutes on 35 northbound. But let's get it back here here on Transguide there, 281 near the airport at 410. Very quiet start there, but things will get busy in the next few minutes or so. For right now, just keep your eyes on the road. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. What started as a dispute between a couple has turned into a criminal case. San Antonio police say a woman shot a man, sending him to the hospital. Katrina Weber is live on a street called Aurelia, not far from I-10 and MLK. Is there an update on his condition, Katrina? 
Now, police told us that that man uh, suffered a, a non-life-threatening wound, and he is being treated at a hospital. Now, the shooting happened just before 4.30 this morning, but we still have investigators and police uh, going through the house, going through the scene, uh, collecting evidence. They say that it appears that this is related to some sort of a domestic dispute. The woman, uh, they believe, shot the man and then started walking away from the scene. Now, officers did track her down and take her into custody. They say they also found a gun here at the scene. That man was shot in his lower body, they say in the groin area. Uh, he was taken to a hospital and again, they say it's a non-life-threatening wound, but uh, they are continuing to investigate here. Uh, it looks like they are starting to wrap things up though because we had more officers here earlier, but uh, now just a few investigators still here at the scene as they try to figure out exactly what led to this violence. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Not a story we first told you about earlier this month. Neighbors claiming suspect, excuse me, suspected squatters were stealing their utilities. The city told those living in the house at 727 Morning View Drive they had no authority to be there and there was no water service. Patty Santos looked into that property, the person claiming ownership of the house and why this is not a first for him. I have never seen the likes of this before. 30 years of practicing law, but David Dilley says this case is unique. I've never encountered someone who is just so relentless and who is just dangerous enough in the sense that he knows a little bit of the law and knows how to get free information, how to not have to pay for filing fees to file suits and get enough free forms, legal forms left and right. In July of 2022, he says Frank Carrera with an alleged fake deed moved into this property on the west side. The house was under renovation. He was wrongfully claiming that it was his property. Police called it a civil matter. Dilly says it took the owners six months to get him out. Now someone else is living there. His clients spent time and money fighting appeals all the way to the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals where the case remains pending. Herrera cost Dilly's clients thousands in legal fees. Court records show Herrera filed an affidavit of inability to pay costs, seeking a waiver intended for those who can't afford to pay. Dilly says he contested it, but a judge approved the waiver. The system is in place for a reason for people that can't afford to pay filing fees, but he's taken advantage of the fact to use it more of a, uh, as a sword than a shield for some sort of protection. He's trying to obtain things without earning them, without paying for them. Court records show Herrera has six criminal case arrests dealing with theft. Dilly has filed a lawsuit against Herrera to protect his client from any future civil lawsuits regarding the house by barring him from filing more bogus suits. Herrera's motion to have the temporary injunction in Dilly's case thrown out was denied. The case is set to go to trial in November. If you have filed five lawsuits in the last seven years and uh, you've lost those cases, uh, you could be determined to be a vexatious litigant. In March, neighbors on Morning View Drive called KSAT for help, claiming suspected squatters were siphoning utilities from them. The house belongs to Bear County, but Herrera is now living there. Court records show he filed a new lawsuit in February, this time against the former owner of the house, claiming the property rightfully belongs to him. Court documents show the defendant has not yet filed a response to the case, which is set for a hearing in April. However, city officials showed up at the house Tuesday afternoon. A statement from the city attorney's office says it was determined the people inside had, quote, no authority to be there. KSAT reached out to Herrera by email. The man claims the property on the west side belongs to him, but he lost the case because he missed the court hearing. He also claims to have liens on a lot of other properties. Moving forward, the city says it is, quote, exploring all legal options to abate this dangerous situation to the neighborhood. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Seven Virginia law enforcement officers and three hospital workers are facing murder charges in the death of 28-year-old Ivo Otieno. As a warning, this surveillance video might be hard for some to watch. Now, Virginia sheriff's deputies are seen bring, bringing Otieno inside a psychiatric hospital where he's then placed on the ground. Authorities say deputies and hospital staffers are seen on top of Otieno and restraining him for more than 10 minutes. The chief medical examiner ruling Otieno was smothered to death. Prosecutors are saying it took deputies more than three hours to call 911.
In a separate story, two inmates in Virginia back in custody after escaping from jail on Monday. Police say 37 year old John Garza and 43 year old Arlie Nemo used tools made from a toothbrush and metal objects to make a hole in a wall. They were found yesterday near a Virginia IHOP. Garza was in custody on charges of contempt of court, probation violations and failure to appear. Nemo was always being held on charges of credit card fraud, forgery, possession of burglary tools, grand larceny, contempt of court and probation violation. Charges related to the escape are still pending. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell will be front and center today with his decision on whether another U.S. rate hike is on the way. The Fed has raised rates eight times since March of 2022, and some analysts say the collapse of two U.S. banks this month could cause the Fed to hold rates steady and give the U.S. economy some breathing room. Economists say the Fed's repeated rate hikes are an attempt to curb inflation back down to around 2%. Time now is 539, 68 degrees. Fiesta is almost here and still has the latest on new locations and new changes for some Fiesta events. And coming up next, stress from chemotherapy can play a big role in cancer patients. What researchers have found now and how it has something to do with their memory. Let's look out there with live cam, kind of humid out there, still misting in areas, 68 degrees, but we will warm up to the low 80s today. And we're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of your week. We'll be right back. Just about 5.43 as we age, the chances increase that we'll have memory lapses, forgetfulness, and a decline in cognitive function. COVID infections can also be a culprit, but so could the stress of chemotherapy and radiation. Ursula Perry explains why inflammation could be the cause, and particularly when it comes to the memory of cancer patients. Acute inflammation is easy to see. A cut, redness, or swelling. It's your body's response to injury. But chronic inflammation is often invisible, with no telltale signs that it's wrecking your body. It's always been thought that inflammation can potentially have a connection between cognitive changes, even in non-cancer patients. Now cancer researchers want to know what role chronic inflammation caused by physical or emotional stress can play on a patient's cognition. In a recent study, they took blood from 400 breast cancer survivors to measure their C-reactive protein or CRP levels. These inflammatory markers or proteins in your blood can be elevated when the body is under some form of stress. Dr. Graham and colleagues at Georgetown found that chronic inflammation may play a role in development of cognitive problems. And they say by identifying a scientific predictor for memory problems, they may be able to help patients prevent it. I don't think that's, it's gonna be a one and done, but I think this is a step. Brain fog can be a lot like real fog. It comes up very slowly, but eventually takes completely over. Now the doctors are trying to identify the ways in which to drop your inflammation. And while medicine may not be a cure, other interventions could be like forcing yourself to do meditative exercises, things that force your brain to focus. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 544 and 68 degrees for now. Roads look good to me right now. We're looking at I-10 and ProBand, and I'm getting a look from Stephen. Oh, thumbs up from Stephen. That's a good sign. There's Transguide, I-10 at ProBand. I didn't want you to think I was making things up. So there, it helps <laughs> there when it we is. have the pictures too. Yes. If you like the little itty bitty babies and would like to maybe foster them, Nadia is here from the Animal Defense League and here's some perfect examples. Who are these little ones? So this is broccoli and asparagus. And as you can tell, they're tiny, tiny babies. They're only four weeks old and we need a foster for about four weeks. Yeah. And this is still at the bottle feeding stage. You might have to get up in the middle of the night, you know, just like having a, a little human baby do. And yes, because they don't have little mama with them and they need all the help they can get over there because this takes a lot of the, the work off the staff over there. Right. You know, to have somebody take care of these little ones before they are old enough for adoption which is going to be, be just in about what three weeks or so three weeks like or that. so and yeah and it allows us it gives us more room uh, in the shelter so anyone who is available to foster is, is can come in 
apply online and then pick their babies. Okay, and these two should be available for adoption right around the time Fiesta starts. Mm -hmm. Here's your cue. And, and here look we at are. the Fiesta metal mm -hmm. that they have. Let's see, we're getting it over on this camera right there. <laughs> yeah. And I can't spin it with just one hand, but if you like dogs one side if you like cats there you go the there's other another side, side. <laughs> it spins around so you can get these over there at the animal defense league yes. and uh, how much are they so these are actually going to be $12 mm -hmm. and for every metal that is sold you help us uh, purchase one round of vaccinations for each pet in our care so our hope is to sell out of all of these metals so that we can help more babies out oh fantastic so you go. Oh, sorry. Yeah, just it's cuddled. Yeah. Okay. We'll just let you go there. So if you'd like more information about fostering, about the uh, Fiesta medals, everything else over there, Animal Defense League, 1100 Nacogdoches, <laughs> or the uh, Paul Jolly Center, Pet Smart, give them a call 655-1481, adltexas.org. Thank you, dear. You're that orange tabby looks exactly like a cat that I adopted back in high school out Aww. on the East Coast. Uh, his name was um, Brady. 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 Wow. A cute little Brady version right there. Yeah, he was really cute. 549, let's check in with Steven. Oh, very cute over here, guys. The roads at least. Uh, you can see that things are moving along there. 35 North at Loop 410. Traffic can be cute at some points, uh, but let's get a look there around town because thankfully nothing is really going to slow you down. So the uh, roads are off to a decent start for this Wednesday morning. We did at least have one crash that was reported earlier, but that's already cleared out. So we're not really worried about it, but be on the lookout. A stall has been reported as we take you in right there to 410 northbound at Gulebita Road. Again, not causing issues. It's early in the morning, but check your vehicles and watch for those flashing lights out on the highway anytime you see a hero truck. Let's talk about some road work taking place on 410 on the west side of San Antonio while we're at it. Overhead sign work is has been current and will take us all the way up until the end of the month. That's Friday, March 31st. Remember, this begins at 9 in the morning and hopefully we'll wrap around 4 in the afternoon. We will see a full closure on the northbound main lanes from State Highway 151 to West Military Drive. But always head over to ksat.com slash traffic for a full list of closures there. But back here, US 90 at 36. Uh, they're at 21 near the airport. Things are moving, thankfully. Thankfully. And, and yes. by the way, I was mm -hmm. listening to you guys earlier about yeah. that warning. Uh, Guess what? I'm not here Friday. It's actually, oh. <laughs> it's actually RJ. So oh we'll let gosh. RJ know. Yeah. Oh, so we were, it, it all worked out. We were, or, or we, don't let RJ We heard know. the weather was going to stink <laughs> and that traffic could stink on Friday. So we were going to let him down gently. Yeah. <laughs> and turns out <laughs> I'm not here. that wasn't required. No, I'm not. But I do have my earpiece since I'm always yes. listening uh, to you guys. And that's what we're referring okay. to. So we do have to watch what we say. Yeah. <laughs> Is there's a front moving through. Yes. <laughs> late, late tomorrow night, yeah. early Friday morning, and there is going to be the chance for some uh, potentially stronger storms and wet conditions on Friday morning. So we'll uh, we'll give RJ the heads up about that as he uh, continues to uh, work, to come into work on Friday. All right, beautiful sunset over there at Calaveras Lake. I love that picture. It's great looking right there on the dock. Thank you very much for that. All right, uh, still can see the. So can see the skyline, so that's good news. Obviously, it's not a very clear picture, but a lot better than what it was yesterday. Visibility at the airport, 10 miles, Stinson, 9, 7 Randolph, and Port SA, 7 out there in Kerrville. We don't have anything real, real thick for, as far as fog, but it has uh, gotten a bit thicker over there in Uvalde. Eagle Pass at 3 miles right now, so not as bad as what it was at this time yesterday, but again, we're just monitoring that. Be on the lookout for some of that thicker fog, and there's a lot of mist out there as well, and the roads just assume all the roads are damp with all this moisture and the low clouds hanging around here. So take it easy driving line yourself a couple of extra minutes. We are 15 degrees above normal right now, mid upper 60s, a ton of humidity. These numbers have actually gone up just compared to this time yesterday, uh, 9, 10, 13 degrees, 15 degrees higher than what it was yesterday. And that's on top of yesterday's dew points had gone up quite a bit from the previous day. So this humidity just continues to get pumped on in here. And that's why we've got the little mist and drizzle, the 10% chance throughout the rest of the morning. Pretty much steady temperatures all morning long with the high humidity and cloud cover. 75 at noon. 
We will see some more sunshine mixed in with the clouds later on today. Not an overabundance of sunshine, but at least a little bit more than yesterday, and that's just going to help to warm us up into the low 80s. And then it gets even warmer tomorrow. We'll have the same start, very humid conditions. That's setting the stage for the front to move on through late tomorrow night and early, early Friday morning. And some of those storms as this moves through could be on the strong to potentially severe side. And then, of course, this will shift its way across the area into early Friday morning. So that's what we're going to be on the lookout for. This is not going to be a big cold blast of air like last week's front, but it will dry us out definitely Friday into Saturday. And then the humidity is going to try and work its way back in here on Sunday. Temperatures in behind the front won't be that much different, but it's going to feel a whole lot better with that drier air and the drier air will though allow low temperatures to get down closer to normal by Saturday morning, somewhat on Sunday, and then we do have another front moving on through here by the start of next week. So the forecast today, we're going to be up to 75 cloudy skies at noon. Clouds are going to be holding tough again. We'll still keep some mist and drizzle around this morning. Then 82 high temperature later on today, anywhere from about uh, six, seven degrees above normal with some sunshine thrown in tomorrow. Same start and then we're going to be up into the mid 80s front moves through in the overnight hours. A couple of uh, potentially stronger storms early on Friday and then we clear on out. Great looking Friday, Saturday, more clouds increasing Sunday. Another front to start next week. Looks good overall, especially yes. that weekend. Yeah, weekend's going to be really, really nice, especially Friday late and uh, Saturday. Later, but not in the early hours. No, not in Friday morning. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 554, 68 degrees. Let's look out there with TransGuy. I saw on Loop 410 at Kuleva Road some flashing lights over there. We're going to be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos very soon. Okay, coming up on GMSA, we're going to take a close look at Transguide. We have had some issues again this morning. There's a live look at 410 and Calabria. I know that's out of focus right now, but we do see those flashing lights and quite a few headlights coming right at the camera. We'll talk to Stephen coming up.